uh, June 23rd, uh, and I will call the Paulding County Board of Commissioners work session to order. Um, don't see any elected officials have come in. Brian, if you'll bring that list forward, please. Got a cell phone on, be a good time to turn that off. And we know it, it's returning to normal somewhat when we have the uh, handsome face of Pastor Johnny McBurrows here. And, and I was speaking with him yesterday. He's been through a lot during this period. And uh, uh, my prayers have been with you, Pastor McBurrows, and uh, we're glad to have you bring us our invocation and lead us in the pledge. Thank you. Stand if you're able. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the board. It's a pleasure to be here to bring the invocation this morning. Let us pray. Our great God and Father, we come in the name of your Son, our Savior, and our Lord. You say in everything, give thanks. And we stand here today to give thanks to you for what you have brought us through and where you are taking us now. We pray now, Lord God, for this great nation, this great state, this great county. We pray for our public officials this morning that you would give them the wisdom that they need to do the things that bring glory to you and bless the citizens of Pauling County. We pray now, Lord God, for our first responders and all that puts on their uniforms day by day to make this place safe for us. We realize, Lord God, all the upheaval that is in the world today, but we know that you have the remedy and you have the answer. We pray, Lord God, for your divine grace, your divine intervention, that we as a nation can continue to come together around you, knowing, Lord God, that you love us, you love each one of us, and you have the power, you have the authority to change everything, but most of all, Lord God, change us one by one, individually, that we, Lord God, will learn how to love and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Bless this meeting today. Bless us all, we pray, in the matchless name of our Savior. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor McBurrows. Uh, Pastor McBurrows is the, um, the preacher, the pastor at Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church and is involved in numerous uh, boards and really a, a tribute and an asset to our community. Uh, under minutes, uh, the June 4th, 2020 State of the County meeting minutes, the June uh, the June 9th, 2020 work session and board meeting minutes, and the June 16th, 2020 uh, call to joint meeting minutes are available for your review. We have a positively Paulding segment uh, this morning about the uh, joint call to meeting, and we'll uh, show that right now under our announcements. Hello everyone, I'm Dave Carmichael, I'm the chairman of the Pauley County Board of Commissioners and on behalf of the entire board, I'll tell you the reason that we are here at the airport and having a uh, joint economic development meeting or summit and also just uh, to talk about how we can better integrate as county entities to provide the uh, citizens with uh, better quality of life and advance Pauley County. I'm Dan Nolan. My role here today for the meeting was to gather the, the folks around the table and uh, get Team Paulding all on the same page, moving in the right direction for economic development and be able to support Michael Hughes and his mission. Hi, I'm Michael Hughes. I'm uh, with Paulding County Economic Development Organization and I, I serve as the Executive Director. Uh, I'm excited about this opportunity to join Team Paulding. Um, excited about today's uh, event where we're beginning the dialogue to talk about uh, the vision for Paulding County. Paulding County's economic development organization can play facilitating that role, working with the various uh, partners uh, in the county. So that was just last week. It was a real good session. Uh, when did you learn how to do the Air Force salute, or Brian? Oh. <laughs> uh, 
We have no invited guests today, uh, bid awards none, uh, reports from committees and departments none, uh, public participation on agenda items, no one has signed up. Uh, under the consent agenda, it's consideration of the following two items. Uh, appoint Deborah Seaver to fill the unexpired term of Herb Haynes on the Planning and Zoning Commission with a term ending December 31st, 2020. And uh, then number three is to appoint uh, Margaret Nickel to the Library Board of Trustees with a term beginning July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30th, 2023. Under old business, we have none. Uh, under new business, uh, number four is to discuss action to adopt Ordinance 20-07, amendments to the alcohol ordinance regarding permits for nonprofit organizations. County Attorney Mr. Phillips will report. Commissioners, in our alcohol ordinance, we have a special provision that allows uh, legitimate non not for profits to apply for a temporary alcohol permit to serve alcohol at an event which is being set up for their benefit. Uh, this follows state law, which also recognizes a special treatment for nonprofits and temporary alcohol permits. Presently, right now, in our county ordinance, we do require, uh, in addition to other things, we require that a not-for-profit utilize an, what we refer to as an alcoholic beverage caterer. Most of those alcoholic beverage caterers are local restaurants that also have permits to serve alcohol. This is an additional requirement uh, that currently exists in our code beyond state law. And after discussing, uh, having a meeting with the Department of Revenue and receiving some feedback from some local not-for-profits, uh, this proposed amendment removes that requirement from the county code that requires a not-for-profit to use an alcoholic beverage caterer. Uh, the rationale for the removal is that we would then become, have the same requirements as state law and from a non-profit perspective, this will give them more flexibility in choosing how they choose to um, serve at their events, uh, presumably driving, reducing the cost since they don't have to use an alcoholic beverage caterer for that purpose. This would only apply to special events uh, that occur at non-government facilities. If a not-for-profit still wants to use or get a, get a, still wants to use a facility like the senior center, they will still be required to have an alcoholic beverage caterer for those locations. Any questions? What's the reasoning for that exception for government buildings? The idea is that for the government buildings, the county administrator and staff would have better control on what is going to happen when there is alcohol served inside one of our facilities. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? New business number five is discuss action to adopt resolution 20-18, Georgia Environmental Finance Authority Loan Agreement Modifications, and authorize the chairman to execute uh, all other documents related uh, to loan number WS12LIMA 07WS, and Ms. Pollard will report. Thank you. Um, good morning. And if you don't mind, would you go ahead and read number six as they are identical, just all different right. loans. Number six is discuss action to adopt Resolution 20-19, a Georgia Environmental Finance Authority Loan Agreement Modifications, and authorize the chairman to execute all other documents related to loan number CW09093. Um, the first one is the loan that was issued with the Reds War, and the second one was um, issued several years ago for reuse water lines. GFA, um, or the Georgia Environmental Finance board approved um, <clears throat> the waiving of interest and deferral of payments for six months as a result of um, COVID-19 and the lack of revenue and um, so they're hoping that this measure will assist us in in being able to to get through this time so we will in January we will have um, we'll begin interest in payments, but this just defers it for six months. So there's no cost to us. The interest is not accruing um, for this time period. So unless you have any questions, it, it will be added to the end of the loan. So it extends the loan for six months after the initial um, payoff date. So we do pay it, it's just delayed. 
system. We do pay it. We do pay it. It's just delaying it for six months. Well, thank you, Tabitha. Number seven, discuss action to approve the repair of uh, one Cummins backup power generator for the copper mine WRF as described uh, on quotation number 132713 in the amount of $82,457.15. Ms. Ashmore to report. Hi. Um, water reclamation facilities are required to have two sources of power. Um, and as such, the copper mine plant was built um, with standard electrical feed and a backup generator on site that maintains the plant, the lab provides power to the laboratory so that we are ma both maintaining compliance and treatment, but also our capabilities to monitor um, and report that compliance. Um, we have a 1,200 uh, horsepower uh, generator that delivers 1,000 kilowatts or 1,200 kVA of power to that site. In December, during a normal exercising of the, um, uh, of the generator, it began smoking. And we got Cummins out there to take a look at it. Um, it was initially thought that it was just going to need a top end um, cylinder rebuild, but and we got a PO to do that repair. And in the course of the repair, we found they found more that was uh, and more additional damage to the crank and the bearings due to some metal shavings that were that were down in it. Um, We've explored options. The, the repair cost is, is $82,457.15. We did explore other options. Uh, we reached out uh, to see if we could get a, a secondary power feed into the plant, uh, whether that was available. It is not. Uh, because of our location to Greystone and the commitments, our, our location to Wellstar and the commitments that, that are made to keeping the power, having uh, power for the hospital, they're unable to provide us a secondary feed. Um, we, all, we looked at um, wh what's the cost of replacing the engine, uh, and the, the replacement engine is uh, $180,000 for the engine, but it's not the same configuration as what we had in a ten, have in a 10 year old generator so there's additional additional cost to to get it to fit um, a complete generator replacement is two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars so we're coming to you today um, that with the uh, recommendation that that and request that we uh, fund re fund the rebuild of that engine and on the existing generator Kind of make the schedule because I know in the water board meeting the other day it was a pretty low hour engine. It is. I know the time is what makes go out of warranty, but is there a maintenance program? It's exercise. I, I know it's exercised. I believe weekly, um, and I'll get you that. I'll have to get you that information on yeah, the on the yeah. maintenance schedule. Because I know things like that sometimes with low hours just yeah. kind of get left. But you know, oil breaks down and stuff mm -hmm. like that over time too so just was wondering any other questions comments thank you Lori. Okay. number eight is discuss adam to action to approve terms of the continuing engagement with the law firm of bentley bentley and bentley not to exceed seventy five thousand dollars for assistance and legal advice regarding updates to the pauling county code of ordinances the pauling county zoning ordinance the Pauling County Development Regulations and Assistance with Economic Development Strategies. Good morning. Glad to be with you all in person. Um, just wanted to give everybody an update on this project. We started it in April of 2019, and we have made a lot of accomplishments to date. We um, estimate that we're probably about 75% done, and I just wanted to, in my um, agenda item I gave some of the highlights but I just wanted to share some today. Um, we have completely overhauled the and, and 
my first focus will be on the zoning ordinance. We've completely overhauled the definitions. We've incorporated terminology from the North American Industrial Classification System, so we've converted just about all of our permitted uses to that terminology, and that's something that will tie in. Um, one of the projects our business license team did during when we were closed to the public was they got everybody's six-digit NAICS, I call it NAICS number, so we'll be able to have a report um, in July showing breaking down by NAICS, which classifies just about every kind of business that you could think of. So we've converted our zoning terminology over to that. Um, we have created seven new zoning districts, um, we're mostly focusing going between B2 and I1. So we have a lot of sort of e-commerce forward thinking. Um, I think one thing the pandemic's taught us is that the way we shop is probably going to change. And we've created these new zoning, zoning districts to um, allow for these uses. I think that one day Amazon's probably going to have a warehouse in every jurisdiction full of what they know people in that jurisdiction like so they can get it to them as fast as possible. Um, Fred Bentley and his team have been working with the water system on updating their regulations. Um, we've done some work um, with our new economic development director to identify some nodes that we'd like to change our future land use map as part of the comprehensive plan so we can preserve some of these nodes for commercial growth. And like I said, we think we're about 75% done and we probably need about three more months working with Mr. Bentley to get a complete um, unified development code combining all those documents into one. Which, Ann, could you explain to the public kind of what that really means for business um, friendliness? We want to make it easier. If you want to develop something in Paulding County right now, we have several documents in several places that you would need to go through to read. And so we're trying to have a unified development code. One of the things I'm working on right now, looking at the development regulations, and I realized that it's just in the wrong order that it's not in the order that you develop things. So we're trying to start a unified development code that begins probably with zoning and ends with building, all in one document. And the last date that these was updated for the most part was Development regulations 90s. was 1999, and um, the zoning ordinance has obviously had some changes, but the last major update, I believe, was 2003. So this is just a big piece of the pie that we have to have. To you know, work toward a better county for economic development and growth, so, thanks. What happens if you don't do your homework? <laughs> you get in trouble. <laughs> I know y'all worked hard and also brought uh, the city of Hiram and Dallas when they're available. Yes. Uh, in along with, uh, I think our uh, economic development uh, executive director in the room now. And, uh, a lot of other visitors that have come in and added a lot. I know Commissioner Caker and you, Chairman, have dropped in, and we welcome anybody to drop in. We do manage to have some fun <laughs> when we work on this. And when we were shut down to the public, we never stopped meeting on Thursday. We had one Thursday where we had technical difficulties, and it just didn't work. But otherwise, and we actually got a lot of work, especially um, converting the zoning district uses over to the North American Industrial Classification System during that time. Um, what I learned in those ordinances and the planning and zoning <laughs> that every word means something <laughs> and I'm telling you we went through every single word and described it it was um, it was a huge learning experience for me and uh, we really did need it those ordinances and the planning and zoning um, it was it was crazy old and it's some of the words were like really <laughs> so um, I'm glad we're doing it it's about time and it's just it's something that needed to be done and I'm glad we're almost finished with it and I think going forward in the future something that I hope we incorporate every once in a while nobody's a perfect typist every once in a while you'll find a typo um, we have um, a text amendment this afternoon at the Planning Commission and one thing that we're fixing is some typos and I'd like to see in the future maybe every year in December when we find these we make a note and we put it on a Planning Commission and a Board of Commissioners meeting to just take care of those on an annual basis so that it's not 10 years from now and you're like oh that phrase is still wrong <laughs> and it, the last meeting I went to Mr. Bentley gave me a book and I'm telling you it was about this thick and he says, take this home and read it over the weekend. And I'm like, you're kidding me, right? 
every once in a while for just comparison I, I look at Gwinnett County has a unified development code and I look at it online and it wasn't until one day I looked at the bottom and theirs is over 500 pages so I, I think it's not strange to have a large document but I think once it's all in one place that it will be a lot easier to use for everyone I think another bit of information in that the public would be interested in and even our staff that's here today is the meeting that where we had experts in the field like a Neil Fawcett, Fawcett or a Michael Hughes before he was hired with us and you might name some others that that actually graded what we were doing and said hey let's do a timeout and, and test whether this is valuable or not and that's something we had planned to have another follow-up meeting with that team of experts um, we had mr. Fawcett um, Michael was here at that time um, we had Michelle McCauley who used to work for Fulton County but now works for La Croix engineering he does a lot of work in the county Chuck Rand, who obviously used to work here and works for a local engineering firm that does a lot of work um, just to, to you know bounce off our initial ideas and make sure that we weren't doing anything that was crazy off the wall and I think that first meeting we definitely had positive feedback and we look forward to when we can bring them back either virtually or in person to show them what we've accomplished that was um, late fall last year when we did that thank you so much thank you number nine is discuss action to enter into a memorandum of agreement with the Paulding County Economic Development Incorporated and authorize the chairman to execute all necessary documents. County Administrator Frank Baker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is uh, really an exciting uh, agenda item. Um, we've been working on this for quite some time. I'm glad Michael's here today, and uh, I might ask him to come up after I finish, and he may have a couple things to say if the board would permit him to. Um, this is uh, MOA. Memorandum of Agreement between the Paulding County Economic Development Inc. and Paulding County Government to promote and enhance the economic vitality of the county. It's not only a financial commitment by the county of uh, $300,000 this fiscal year and $300,000 next fiscal year, but it's a collaborative effort uh, to work on these vital things that we need to do. It's going to assist with the goals of recruiting new business, helping um, uh, helping local businesses sustain um, their operations, promote tourism, that's, that's really a, a huge thing that as we move forward, uh, develop a quality workforce by focusing on employment and job skill training, support uh, and foster uh, startup businesses, and enhance the Paulding County's uh, quality of life and maintain vibrant downtowns and community centers. So this is a really, really important thing for us to be doing. And it's taken us a while to get here, and it's been a lot of work that's gone on. Um, with this and we're so excited to have Michael here this morning and uh, if, if the board would permit I'd like to have Michael come up and just um, maybe have a few comments about this MOA. Thank you Michael. Good morning Chairman, Commissioners, uh, morning. County Administrator. Um, first of all uh, on behalf of the EDO we are very uh, thankful for your financial support of the of that organization. Um, excited about um, what this represents in terms of um, resources that will be available to uh, the EDO to begin moving forward with um, our economic development effort, efforts, um, looking at um, hiring some additional staff that will be able to support me as we move forward. And um, this agreement just provides um, some details in terms of the types of services that you can expect to get from the EDO. Um, we thought that was uh, prudent and appropriate uh, to have uh, on the record, if you will, um, for yourselves as well as the public. So excited about that and be help happy to answer any questions. You know, um, just last week when that one EMC yes, dropped by and dropped off a check for support, you yes, know, that's sir. the second EMC that we've had do that already in this county where they've noticed that, uh, the effort that we have moving forward. but. Uh, you know, I want to say we started, this is one of the first things a year and a half ago that we wanted to uh, take care of. And it took a long time and a lot of interviews to find the right person. Um, and Michael come to us as a blessing with his experience uh, and his know-how. Just one county over, he's seen the growth that we're going to be looking at in the next 10, 15 years. So 
he's been there done that but it's you know the value to our the citizens they probably say you know three hundred thousand is a lot of money but you know uh, when you're in business it takes a lot of money to make money and uh, this is just the way I look at it. It's a big investment for the county. Absolutely. Um, so I'm really excited to see, you know, the fu what the future holds in the near future, you know, which I know, you know, economic development doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it takes a lot to put in place and um, get the wheels moving. But everything that I've worked with you on so far, Michael, I want to tell you I've been very impressed. So thank you. Thank you. I'll just add to that. I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity uh, with the joint meeting that we had in the Industrial Building Authority, which will be executive uh, of that financial arm to the county. Um, but with the Board of Commissioners and the EDO and, and the IBA and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Board of Education, um, the Airport Authority, you know, there's in the two cities, there's going to be a lot of locking of arms. To, uh, to be able to drive down the field and hopefully get some good touchdowns. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Number 10 is discussion, discuss action to approve the development agreement with Abney Austin Investments LP, Pine Hill Investments LTD, and authorize the chairman to execute all necessary documents. And County Administrator Frank Baker is going to report on this also. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this uh, development agreement is for uh, some property that's uh, referred to really as a Sheffield Trails Abdi Township. The property is located on Seven Hills Parkway at Gulledge Road on the north end um, of the county. And the parties desire to improve uh, public roads adjoining uh, the development and to identify and set aside real uh, property for the purpose of a future public school for the development and, um, and for the surrounding area. So uh, this is something that uh, is important uh, for us to take a look at and to present to you today. Um, the, the owners um, that we're entering into this development agreement have um, agreed to contribute $650 uh, to the county per final uh, lot platted uh, pursuant to specific conditions that's in the development agreement uh, for realignment of Seven Hills Boulevard and Gullage Road. So that's a major thing that we're looking at with this. And um, we'll also extend a three-year option to the school district to purchase a portion of the property. So those are the, uh, the elements that are, con um, are connected to the development agreement. And uh, I know um, our county attorney's putting a little, little time on this too, and he may have some, uh, uh, some answers to some questions that y'all may have as a board. I might just comment that um, we have spent, particularly Pro Tem, Brian Stover and myself, uh, in keeping the rest of the board as informed as we could, uh, multiple meetings and hours on the phone and additional hours on conference calls. Uh, probably the longest conference call I've ever been involved in was with, uh, with this development agreement. Uh, try to take it one step at a time and as you remember uh, Ms. Lippman was just talking about uh, the new classifications which also includes business not just residential uh, that there have been a lot of changes uh, underway and in fact some of the uh, classifications have not even become formal uh, code yet so uh, there's just been a lot of work put into this and we, we hope that it will translate into the ability for the Planning Commission and those members, along with the Board of Commissioners, uh, to work more uh, transparently and uh, just openly and uh, with, with a lot of background roots uh, that, that we think will work productively and professionally for our, for our county. Yeah, and, you know, just to spell it out a little bit, I mean, the the intersection, say, at the Seven Hills Parkway and Gulledge Road is, you know, is, is a, it's one of the much-needed improvements, uh, intersections that needs in this county, which uh, I think is about seven acres of property that's involved with this to straighten the whole 
the road out right there. Uh, and then there's you know some old projects in the past, known as the Gap Sewer, that has been they've invested millions and millions of dollars in the past to get here. So um, and it, it actually lowers the amount of density on that piece of property. That's a PRD now. I think it's lower, it's about 250 lots less and creates about a, maybe a 75 foot buffer on the front and 50 around the outside edges, different than what the PRD is now. So it's it's, it's an overall benefit, uh, not just a one-sided deal. So I don't, I don't know if Quinley can speak about the project any to give a better enlightenment to the public, but we're glad to have Michael Quinley here uh, this morning, and uh, he, he has educated me on, on a lot of things uh, uh, that I certainly was not cognizant or knowledgeable of. Uh, Michael, do you have any interest in, in – uh, anybody have any questions? That, yeah, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer any. All right, I guess we – we don't have any, so we'll move on to uh, number 11, which is discuss action to adopt resolution 20-20, authorizing the conveyance of 0 0.15 acres of land to the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia. And our county attorney, Jason Phillips, is going to report. Well, commissioners, we moved the uh, Veterans Monument to Veterans Park, as you're well aware, but uh, the land that the Veterans Monument sat on is still behind the wind building, and it's still owned by Baldwin County. Uh, surrounding that land is the wind building, uh, which has been deeded over to the Board of Regents for uh, college purposes. And the Board of Regents has expressed an interest in acquiring this 0.15 acres to add to their existing holdings over there in order to span, expand that parking lot, I believe, as they rehab the wind building, which is currently ongoing right now. State law requires that a public hearing be held before a government can elect to transfer any property to a public school system. Had that public hearing last Thursday, uh, no members of the public attended, uh, so there's nothing to report from that. So this is uh, just seeking your approval to go ahead and authorize really two things. One is to lift a land restriction, a covenant that's on the property, which limits its use for the honoring of veterans. There's no need for that covenant any longer because the monument has moved. And then the second thing is to authorize its conveyance to the Board of Regents. Any questions? Thank you, Jason. That is the conclusion of our regular business. Um, we do have a requirement for executive session. However, I would like to move down the agenda to public participation on non-agenda items. Uh, and we have Mr. Kevin Ashford uh, that has signed up previously to speak on cross-contamination of COVID-19. Uh, Kevin, you're in the back there. Come, please come forward to the microphone. Thank you for being here. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself real quick. Ex-Deputy Ashford, Fulton County Sheriff's Department, training officer, instructor at the academy. Now I hold my um, investigator's license in the state of Georgia. My company is Private Investigative Corporate Services. I pass my boards, okay? Um, I'm here today. I wouldn't, wouldn't be here today. I called Mr. Davis. I called you probably three times, Mr. Davis, you didn't call me back. Now i got to get in front of you guys. I would rather have something behind closed doors and we'd have been talking about this. Um, I came in here with all these letters back and forth, but I'm going to put those to the side, just talk freely this morning. Um, so in scenarios of the public is where I'm, I'm always thinking back and going with different scenarios. And my scenarios keep going and keep going and keep going. And so the scenario I have today is we have a code on the books that you can let your dog defecate on someone else's property as long as you pick it up. Okay. So you can't pick up urine. 
and all feces that come out aren't solid. Okay? And even if you pick them up, there's still going to be something left. So I know I'm getting on some people's toes here that have little foo-foo and fee fee around, and you don't believe that they can do this. But remember, when you're writing down the main streets, and remember back when the COVID was escalated, remember all the businesses were closed. And when the businesses were closed, oh my God, I was shivering because I was using all my savings money to keep myself rent, bills, car note, insurance. And so you had a breakout. My father's a funeral director, right? So I seen on TV where the guy got the body from Emory, and I told myself, I said, now, if he doesn't know because of HIPAA what the man died from, and he's not wrapped up like he used to be when I used to get the bodies, and it said, hazard, biohazard, father said, take him straight to the crematory. Don't unwrap him, don't do anything with him. Next thing you know, the guy down there, downtown Atlanta, he came down with COVID from a body given off fumes. So I believe now that we understand that it can be trans transmitted different ways, not only in the air, but if little Foofy goes and puts her nose because dogs travel in a pack and they believe that this is their area, this is their territory. So he's going to put his nose down and he's going to park his little self right on top of that other dog that defecated or urinated there and he's going to mark that territory. Now he puts his nose down there and now he goes back and now the kids, he's in the kids lap and he's kissing the kids all in the mouth and he jumps up to mommy, kissing mommy and then the father cuts his face. He's getting ready in the morning like he's cutting his face. He's cutting off the epidermis of his skin. Well, if you might kiss him or you might kiss grandma or you might kiss the kids. Next thing you know, you got COVID. So what I'm here to do today is to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, look at this code, change it now. Because there are people like myself that work downtown Atlanta. I come back out here. There's cross-contamination there. I'm in here with, what, 21, 22 people today? This thing is serious. And so when I tell somebody, please, sir, please, ma'am, interpersonal communication is called respect to one another. Please, sir, please, ma'am, hands behind my back so I'm non-aggressive. It's called non-engagement. Don't walk all the way up on them. Sir, ma'am, please don't defecate in our yard, please. Because they're walking right from across the street from their front yard and their backyard, and they defecate in my front yard. It's disrespectful, first of all. Second of all, let me just tell you why. I don't want to hear why. The code says this, the code says that. I'll pick it up. But you're not picking up everything. And then I'm walking into my house. Now my son's on the floor. He has a little rash on his arm, you know, dry skin. He's scratching. Next thing he tells me, man, my arm is killing me. Dad, I don't know what this is. I'm getting alcohol. Alcohol is taking it away. But remember, I walked. I walked through the yard. Now it's on my carpet. So what I'm here today to say is change that code so it makes sure that in 2020, with, this, with this, this virus disease thing that's going around that we don't even know what it is, that we'd say, okay, look, either get permission from the landowner that you can defecate on their property, and that might be good because a lot of people out here have two or, 300, two or 300 yards and they can do it. So that's what I'm here today, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all have a good day. Thank you for your time, Mr. Ashford. Things I would have never thought about. All right. <clears throat> we do have a requirement to go in executive session uh, this time. Uh, <clears throat> well, let me back up since most of uh, the room will vacate uh, before we come back out of executive session. 
So let me take this opportunity to allow the commissioners, if, if they have a word of wisdom or any announcement that you'd like to make before I ask for adjournment. You want a word of wisdom and you look down to me. All right. <laughs> um, oh what is that supposed to mean? I'll make a motion that we skip Sandy. Um, <laughs> No, I've, you know, I've been thinking lately, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world, and uh, I already had a really high appreciation for the men and women who carry a badge and gun to work every day, but uh, uh, I was hoping Gary would be here and get a chance to see him. So, uh, Gary, wherever you are, as well as the police departments for um, Dallas and Hiram and our men in uniform in the back here, we um, really appreciate all of you and the work you do and the, um, the effort and the sacrifice it takes. Mr. Ashford, thank you for your service, um, and thank you for coming to Paulding. Um, we had, well, Dave and I had the opportunity to go to the um, Museum of Flight at the airport a couple weeks ago. If you haven't been on a tour, I think they do tours on Wednesdays, schedule a tour and go see some of the stuff that they have out there. It's um, really interesting and exciting to have that at our airport so go check it out amen to that ditto uh, I would like to add to Ron's comment and, and thank the first responders uh, we have had several uh, peaceful protest events and uh, everyone's come forward and, and they've they've been okay uh, positive for the for the most part even State Patrol has joined in so uh, marshals in the back there and uh, all the public safety that uh, may see this or watch this just know as Ron said how how much appreciated you are and also thank our county administrator Frank Baker with his law enforcement background and just the way he does his job uh, it's been a very help it's been very much of a help to coordinate and collaborate Frank so thank you yeah and to piggyback on uh on what Ron said earlier, Paulding County Sheriff's Office is they, they do have a lot of openings right now, and there's a job fair that's going to be held on Thursday, June the 25th, from 10 to 2 p.m. at the Watson Government Complex in the cafeteria down there. So, uh, you know, if you know somebody or you know anybody that's getting involved, especially some younger folks or something, encourage them just to uh, help us get the word out. Um, you know, got some other people maybe disgruntled because people aren't supporting them where they're at and uh, they want to make a move. Uh, I think that we we harbor a, a great department, and I think that uh, we, you know we're going forward. We've done a lot of stuff in the past 18 months to uh, to two years uh, to help these folks, and uh, and I think that Paulding County is a great place to work. Uh, I just want to encourage anybody interested to uh, come to the job fair. The worst thing about being last. <laughs> what else is there to say? <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> Okay, thank you, everyone. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn into executive session for pending and potential litigation. I'll make that motion, Dave. Motion by Commissioner Davis. Is there a second? Second. A second by Commissioner Caker. All those in favor, say aye. 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 We stand adjourned to executive session.